Good afternoon and welcome to our series of webinars focused on bringing you information about COVID-19 related topics. The information in these weekly webinars is geared toward long-term care and skilled nursing facilities, but we encourage everyone who is interested to attend. Today's webinar will be an overview of an upcoming course from Quality Insights on staffing solutions for nursing homes. Everyone has been entered into this meeting on mute, but we will have a discussion at the end of this webinar. So if you have any questions or comments, please submit them to us using either the chat or the Q&A tool in your Zoom menu. We encourage you to join us every Wednesday at 2 p.m. for more webinars in this series. For next week's webinar, we'll be discussing recent federal TAG updates relating to opioids and substance use disorder. My name is Kathy Caudill. I'm a communications specialist with Quality Insights. And now I would like to introduce our guest today, Amy Porter. Amy is a resource specialist with Quality Insights. In her work over the past five years, she has been engaged in a diverse range of quality improvement initiatives in Pennsylvania, West Virginia, and Delaware. She has gained extensive experience in continuing education planning, design, and delivery through Quality Insights diverse partnerships with state government agencies and offices, with an emphasis in chronic disease, substance use disorder, and team-based care. She has been a licensed practical nurse for nearly 20 years and holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Communications Studies. Amy, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, Kathy, and thank you everyone for joining us for today's webinar. It's not often or ever really that I get to come to this group to do presentation. So it's really an honor and wanna thank the Quality Insights staff who invited me to come today to share about this exciting new course that Quality Insights is in the process of developing related to nursing home staffing. And how about that staffing? Um, we have quite the situation on our hands, don't we? We've all seen and heard about what's going on in the staffing area of healthcare for several years now. And likely you've experienced it yourself. Um, this has been a challenge, uh, not just in the healthcare industry as a whole, but an especially painful experience in many uh, long-term care settings. In fact, just this past summer, there was a survey of published data that came out. Uh, this survey was conducted by the American Healthcare Association and the National Center for Assisted Living. And they surveyed 759 nursing home providers. And out of that data, there were several really interesting things highlighted. But one of the things that came out of that study was that 60% of nursing homes were saying they were experiencing the worst staffing situation since the start of 2022. Um, and the study came out in June. And 98% reported that they were experiencing difficulty hiring staff. And of course, we all acknowledge that COVID-19 really did have its impact on staffing and retention. However, we also know that even pre-pandemic, this issue of staffing um, was going on. And in 2017 to 2018, in that time period, um, there's data out there that we have linked up here on the slide that healthcare workers were turning over at a median rate of 94% in the nursing home setting and a mean rate of 128%. And just to look a little closer at that data from that 2017 to 2018 time period, um, this particular graph that we're looking at is looking at staff turnover rates by overall nursing home compare star rating. So I'm starting over on the clear right of our screen where the five star area is, and you can um, see that the turnover rate in that area is around 76%. And then as we travel to the left to the one star uh, rating, you can see a significant jump, putting the turnover rate at about 135%. So 
So this was well before the pandemic started. So we sort of have this perfect storm of staffing things going on. And to add to all of that, then starting in 2022, we've had a series of updates from CMS uh, related to staffing. The first little screenshot that we have here was from January when CMS started posting staffing and turnover rates on Medicare's Care Compare website. Then in July, uh, they incorporated information into the nursing home five-star quality rating system. And through this, CMS uh, had stated in some of the things that they published that it this would um, hold facilities to a higher standard and hopefully incentivize more robust staffing. And then, and this particular screenshot didn't even make it to the deck because it's so recent, um, on October 21st, um, I just saw in my email, another CMS statement came through. Um, and as part of that statement, they were calling on states to consider a facility staffing level and determining which facilities entered the special focus facility or SSF program. Um, so a lot of developments happening here with nursing home staffing and what group besides those of you who are on the line today know um, and are experiencing every single day how this is impacting you in your facilities. So I thought I would open up um, before we really start talking about some of the details of this course, I wanted to kind of turn it around to the audience today and launch a polling question. So Kathy, if you would go ahead and pull that up for us. Our first polling question today is, how long has it been since you had no vacant positions? And there's a few responses here. You can say, I don't have any vacancies one to six months, six to 12 months, or too long ago, I can't remember. We'll give you a few seconds to get your answers in and then Kathy's got to watch on that. So she'll show us the results here in just a minute. Yeah, let me know when you're ready to, to cut it off. It looks like answers are still coming in though. Awesome, yeah, when it slows down, you can just close it, that's fine. I have a feeling I know what the responses are going to be, but it's pretty unanimous so far. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right, Kathy, I'd say yeah, okay. Good. Yeah. Let's give it a look here. Okay. And of course, <laughs> no surprise, 100% uh, of the responses are to the too long ago. I can't remember. Okay, that one was a pretty pretty basic one. Let's go into our second polling question, Kathy. Let me switch over here. There we go. If you wanna go ahead and launch that polling question. Uh, this question is, what are common causes of understaffing in your facility? And here we're uh, asking you to pick your top three. So probably all of these responses may resonate with you in one way or another, but take a look down through budget concerns, staff turnover, overtime pay issues, lack of interest or qualified candidates, an aging workforce, staff burnout, and you're looking for just the top three. And Kathy, same thing. Once the answers start kind of slowing down a little bit, feel free to show us our res results here. Okay, yeah, they're still coming in. I'm going to say this one might be a little more interesting, a little more diversified responses here, probably. We'll see. Yeah. All right. I think it looks like it's uh, tapered off. So I'm going to end the poll and show the results. Okay, so let's take a look here. Um, it looks like out of everybody who responded, which was the majority of our participants today, the top three um, coming from the bottom here, we have staff burnout, lack of interest or qualified candidates are a tie, and then staff turnover um, coming in third. Interestingly enough, nobody responded overtime pay issues. So this is this is very interesting. Um, all right, we can go ahead and close this out. Thank you everybody for participating in those questions. 
Okay, so switching gears, um, knowing that nursing home staffing is an issue for 100% of our audience today, I wanted to pause here and just have you take a minute to stop everything and just kind of envision, you don't have to respond to this in the chat or anything, but just sort of envision what your workday would look like having either no or only a few vacancies. Think about that for just a second. Now, how would that impact team members who are covering extra shifts or regularly managing extra tasks and duties? A couple more pondering points here. How would being fully staffed impact the lives of your residents? And finally, I want you to think about one thing, just one thing that you would be able to do if you didn't have to dedicate so much time to preparing, interviewing, and hiring for just one position. All of these, I'm sure, are probably fairly interesting questions and maybe things you haven't thought about for a while. And that's likely because you have so many competing priorities. And I think that is such that is such a hard thing because you have so many different things coming at you from so many different directions, so many tasks, so many things that you're being asked to do, that it can be really hard to take a step back and consider not only the current staffing challenges that you have, I mean, that might be right in front of you, but then further, what some of those solutions might be to help address that issue. So this is where Quality Insights um, and the Quinn team really wanna come in to help. And this is really the real reason why we're on this particular presentation today. Quality Insights is creating a brand new course series that's called Staffing Solutions for Nursing Homes. Discover how to create a workplace culture staff won't want to leave. We're excited about this course because there are several really unique components uh, to this, even beyond courses that we typically build uh, for other work. And it's designed specifically for nursing home leaders and registered nurses who have come to the point where they really recognize that they're having challenging staffing situations and want to start thinking about some next steps and ways to kind of enhance their current staffing processes and workflows. I mentioned that this course was unique, and so I'm going to talk about why uh, that's the case. Uh, first of all, and this is most of the services that we offer here at Quality Insights, this is free, so there's no cost to this course series. And we will be offering both uh, nursing and nursing home administrator continuing education credit available. Um, we are currently working through the process of getting that completed, but it will be upwards of five credits that will be available for completing this particular course. It is designed to be a 90-day online program, an optional program. And 90 days doesn't mean that we would ask you to log in every day for 90 days to do work. We would never, we would never ask that. But what it does mean is that over the course of 90 days, you're going to have the space to work through some of these course components, not only to take the course yourself, but also take some practical next steps to enhance your current processes, maybe plug in some of the staff to the different activities that you're thinking about doing, um, really give you some space to be able to do that. Um, beyond just having to squeeze in a course for an hour and then go on about your business. Along with the courses, we are building interactive toolkits, and these really will be staff facing. I'm going to talk about these toolkits in another slide that's coming up. So I'll pass on to the next thing here, which is cohort learning. What we mean when we say cohort learning is that when you and other 
nursing home leaders, RNs register for this particular course, we are going to put you into a small group. And that group will sort of journey together through the course series so that you have an opportunity to um, not only get to know each other, but if somebody has some best practices that they want to share, or if somebody has a question they want to bounce off, somebody else who's doing the same type of work, you'll have the opportunity. And we're building that into the online platform for you to be able to do that and in a few other areas as well. And finally, awards. Uh, we want to make this fun. We want to make it engaging. You all sit through enough webinars and meetings as it is. So we really want to make this as fun as possible. So we're building awards into the online platform. And there will also be some physical awards and really cool tools that we'll be able to send to your facility as well. Now let's talk about some of the specific components of the course. There we go. First part is a kickoff webinar. So after you register for the course, you'll start getting some updates and information about what will happen next. The first component will be the kickoff webinar. And the purpose of that webinar is really just to introduce you to the other people who are part of your cohort or learning group. And we'll also have a subject matter expert available to do a presentation. I'm really looking forward to this because this person is extremely knowledgeable in nursing home staffing and has some really creative ways to enhance staffing and recruitment processes. So that person will be joining us, really looking forward to that. Um, and we'll also give you some information so you can get started um, with the course. The next component is course one, which is focused on hiring. You don't need me to read all the bullets that are here, but we'll be looking at some best practices, um, some resources, some tips for interviewing, different things along the hiring focus. The second course will be retaining. We'll be talking about once you have the staff that you have, what are some steps we can take to help ensure that they stay or stay longer? What can we do with workplace culture to help enhance our environment so that staff want to stay? How can we create a vision for change and work on quality improvement in the process? Course three is focused on evaluating evidence-based leadership, staff and resident satisfaction, a number of different things, looking at current processes. And finally, there is a celebration webinar at the end. Uh, this is where we would like to gather the group for them to kind of share some of maybe their challenges and successes that they had with this program. We'll bring a keynote speaker again um, to speak and we'll have awards for people who have completed the program. We'll be able to highlight some of the successes that the group has had that way. I mentioned earlier that I would be coming back to the toolkits and here we are at this part. It's, it's one thing for you and other nursing home leaders to go through these types of courses, but it's kind of another whole thing to think about plugging that into the staff and kind of making an impact there with your frontline workers. So we're building into the each course a toolkit that will be staff facing. It will be full of different resources that can be applied to their day-to-day -day workflow. And again, I'm bringing that word fun back. We don't want this to be dry or feel like extra work for them. So we're looking at things like videos, um, online games that they'll be able to do with team building activities, bulletin board ideas, um, things that are virtual if that's the way you'd like to go or if you don't really have great um, online capacity at your site, you could do them on paper. Um, we're creating a lot of flexibility there for the toolkits for the staff. So that'll be part of the course as well. And a timeline. So what's the breakdown for this whole thing? The kickoff webinar for this particular course will happen early January, 2023. 
And then we'll release the first course to you February 2023. And then you can see it progresses each month until the celebration webinar, which will be hosted in May. So there's quite a time span here that occurs over the course of the courses. And again, the primary purpose of that is just to create space. So you're not getting information overload. You already have enough on your plate. So this will create some space for you to be able to um, do the course and think about how you might want to apply some of what you learn. While I was putting this information together today, um, that old saying kind of kept coming to mind about not being able to see the forest for the trees. And I think it's a great metaphor to describe how easy it can be to lose sight of how nursing home staffing impacts the big picture of your organization with so many competing priorities. And so maybe for you, the emphasis on staffing and thinking about steps to improve some of your processes has had to get shuffled down to the bottom of your priorities because of everything else going on. So the goal of this particular course is really to highlight how this area of staffing and retention is a key driver to your organization's overall success and help you get in tune with some modern, maybe updated processes and workflows that could really help uh, your current environment. So we're inviting you to take this journey with us, hop in the car here that's on the screen and take this journey with us. Um, let's talk a little bit about how you'll be able to do that. We have a link here up on the screen and Kathy is gonna be sharing this in the chat. If you click on that link or if you scan the QR code that's on this particular slide, that is going to take you out to the Quality Insights MyQI website. For some of you that may be familiar, maybe you already have an account. So when you go to that link, you could put your login information. Or if you don't have an account yet on MyQI, there is a sign up button right there on the screen. It's pretty big um, next to the login window that you can create an account. Once you've done that, either logged in or created your account, you will be prompted to answer just a short handful of questions to enroll in the course. And then that's it. Um, let me go to my next slide here. Um, you should see something like this once you're enrolled. If you already have an account, you might have more here than what you see on this slide. Um, but you will see this nursing home staffing solutions registration tile here. And that's how you know that you're registered um, for the course. And then after that, that's it for now. Um, you'll just watch for updates. We'll stay in touch with you about developments on the course. We'll have a specific date um, for the kickoff webinar and some more specific information for you. But these are the steps to follow to sign up for the course. And my contact information is here. So if you have any questions related to the course, um, you can always reach out to me. Of course, you all are connected with your awesome uh, Quality Insights team as well on a regular basis. So if you have any questions and would prefer to connect with them, we welcome that by all means. And at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Kathy to do some Q&A for us and some other closing information. Okay. And real quick, Amy, I have here about the three different, co the three different cohorts. Could you, I don't think we covered that yet. Could you cover that real quick? Absolutely. So if, if you're in a situation, and I was going to say, I'm going to pull up my chat here too real fast, just so I can take a look. Okay, yes. Most of what I share today is for our very first cohort, which is going to start in January. Like I said, if the timing is really bad and you just can't do that time period, we are planning on offering two additional groups after the first one. The second cohort will begin in July and run through November, 2023. And then there'll be one more group that starts January, 2024, um, a year away. 
So there'll be a few different groups uh, that will run for this particular program. All right, thanks. I put that timeline in the chat. Yes, thank you for doing that. So in a minute, we'll start the Q&A portion of this meeting. If you have any questions or comments that we haven't covered yet, please uh, drop it in either the chat or the Q and or use the Q and A tool, or you can also uh, raise your hand if you would like to be able to audibly speak your question, and I will give you the option to unmute yourself. So those three those three ways you can uh, get a, get your questions or comments to us. Um, while we're waiting, I'd again like to invite everyone to join us for next week's webinar. We will be discussing recent federal tag updates relating to opioids and substance use disorder. Pam Metter will be rejoining us for that presentation. Um, that will be next Wednesday at 2 p.m. In addition to our webinars, we host office hours twice a week. And these are kind of like live chat rooms where you can stop by and someone from our team is there on the other end of that computer to answer your questions or comments. So if you're interested in attending our office hours, those are every Tuesday at 8 a.m. and every Thursday at 2 p.m. If you would like the links to the office hours or our webinars, we put those in the newsletter that we send out each Friday called the Last Minute Lowdown. And if you would like to receive that newsletter, but don't think you're on the mailing list, you can email me at ccaudill at qualityinsights.org and I will get you on the list. And I will drop my email in the chat shortly along with Amy's email. And one more thing before we hop into the Q&A is I wanted to let you know that I will be emailing a recording for today's webinar and the slides and the registration link uh, to everyone who registered for this webinar today. So if you would like any of those links, if you'd like the recording, just keep an eye on your inbox and you will see that later this week uh, at the inbox for the email that you registered with. And let's take a look to see if any questions. Okay, someone did ask about the slides in the presentation. Uh, yes, we'll be posting it on our website too. So I'll be directly emailing it to everybody, but I also post um, them to our website on our multimedia page. So that's qualityinsights.org slash QIN slash multimedia. So as soon as those resources are available, I update our website with that information too. Thanks, Kathy. I did think of one more thing I wanted to mention to the group um, before we're closing out for today. Um, with the cohorts or the small groups that I mentioned in the presentation, um, we are wanting to indeed keep those to small groups. So space is limited for the cohorts. If you are interested at all in registering for the January one, I would recommend doing that um, as soon as possible just to make sure that your spot is reserved. Um, after we get to a certain number, we'll, we'll likely cap it and roll into the, the future co cohort. So I just wanted to make a mention of that too. All right, thank you. So we have a question here. It says, this sounds interesting, but I don't have time to do this right now. Will this be available for later? Um, I think we did cover that now. Um, let's see, for continuing education credit, I would like to get a credit after each course is, oh, sorry, let me read this again. For the continuing education credit, would I get credit after each course is completed or do I have to complete the entire program to receive the credit? That's a great question. Um, so for each of the webinars I mentioned, and actually here, let me close out my um, chat and pull that slide up again, pull this one. Okay, um, for each of the webinars that are part of the course, these green ones on the end, they'll each be eligible for their own um, individual credit. And then there's gonna be one credit per course. Um, so you don't have to complete the whole thing in order to get some credit. Um, but as I mentioned, we are planning to have upwards of five credits available uh, for nursing home administrators and RNs for this course. So if you want all five, then it would be something you'd wanna to commit to the entire series for. All right, thank you. And I just put your email and my email in the chat if anyone needs to copy that down real quick. And like I said, I will be sending an email later this week and I'll include your email, your information in that email. So everybody should have it on hand. Want to give this about one more minute? I think that's it. We, that's all the questions we have so far. Again, if anybody wants to raise their hand to ask a question, 
that's another option too. All right, I'm not seeing any more questions. Do you have anything else you'd like to say before we wrap up, Amy? Uh, thanks, Kathy, and thanks everybody for having me. I, um, as you know, as you might have heard in my bio, nurse by trade, I thoroughly appreciate everything that all of you do in your nursing homes um, and look forward to hopefully interacting with you a little bit more in the course. So thanks again for having me. All right, uh, thank everybody for joining us today. We hope to see you back next week or hope to see you on the course uh, come next year. And Amy, thank you again for joining us today. And I'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. Thank you. Bye.